is happening, everyone? It's Skill Up here. First of all, a huge thank you to everyone who put up a comment or something in relation to my latest video, the uh, one on PvP gear diversity. Really awesome discussion in the comment section. So I wanted to thank you very much for that because it was really, really useful stuff. This video is actually part two of my five part series, looking at the improvements that I think are required to improve the PvP experience in the division. If you haven't checked that first video out, then I really recommend doing so. I've left the link in the description below and I'd also recommend checking out my video discussing how the design of the DZ in its current form is thrusting together two very different types of players each with very different objectives resulting in an unrewarding experience for both of them. That video is just as relevant today as it was when I first made it a few months ago. Now this video will discuss what I think is one of the top priorities of the PvP redesign which is removing ganking. I'm of a view that Division does a very lousy job of setting up the right conditions for encounters specifically because it gives aggressors such a huge advantage in the moment when a pvp encounter commences in this video i'll be explaining why i think it's such a problem and what i think should be done about it now as i said earlier this is only my opinion i'm not saying that i am right i'm not saying that my solutions are the best these are simply my views for your consideration your view is going to be just as valid as mine so let's keep the discussion going carrying on from the last uh, video if you have any comments or thoughts be sure to put them in the uh, in the comments below so in that context let's take a look at the topic of ganking which is without question the number one complaint i have read across my comment section since the minute i started making division videos at the most basic level i think the division has a huge problem with the moment when an engagement commences because those attacking have a huge advantage let's take a simple example and break it down see here i see a player i'd like to attack this person doesn't know I'm there because they are in cover looking in the other direction and their mini map literally does not show me because I'm a neutral agent at this point. This person has no idea that they are about to get ganked, none whatsoever. In this moment, I can literally put down a seeker mine or a turret in order to prepare for the battle. I can then throw a grenade. I can pop booster shot, which also procs competent and adept, giving me a huge increase in damage. And because he can't see me, I can line up a shot that will almost instantly KO this person. To make all of this worse, this person, if they do happen to see me drop all of this stuff in preparation for a gank, they literally cannot shoot me because they will then go rogue and lose DZ funds and DZ rank. They will literally need to wait for me to start shooting them all buffed up as I am before they can safely retaliate. But by the time they've done that, it's already too late. This problem is further compounded if the person I'm about to gank is someone that is reliant upon setting themselves up, so to speak. Maybe they've built Firecrest and they need to have their flame turret down in order to be effective. Maybe they've just used their sticky bomb on a group of NPCs, but their entire build is dependent upon their sticky bomb. At this point, they are literally just totally defenseless as they've had no time to prepare for combat whatsoever and their stuff is on cooldown. Not to mention the person being attacked may only be on half health from the battle they just had from NPCs, which will make them further exposed. Finally, and this as a completely separate example, we all know what's going to happen if a four-man gang squad rolls around and sees someone sitting on their lonesome. That person is completely exposed, completely unable to escape the onslaught that is about to hit them. They are literally just a sitting duck. Now, in the minds of, you know, many people watching this video, you know, everything I've just listed is totally awesome to them. It's exactly how the DZ should be because it's meant to be tense and gritty and unfair and and real. It's unique and it can create these great moments for the person attacking, but also for the person defending if they happen to survive and beat their opponent. But in my personal view, everything I have just listed completely sucks and needs to be changed because none of it is about skill or intelligence or fairness or balance or strategy. And I think it should be about those things because 90% of players aren't going to stick around for a game that facilitates ganking in the way that I've just described. From the example above, rogues have a clear advantage in six areas when they commence a fight. Firstly, they can literally sneak up on you without you seeing them. Secondly, they can damage you before you can even shoot back. 
Thirdly, they can set up all the preconditions for an engagement by using abilities that proc talents like adept or competent and consumables like explosive rounds while their targets cannot. They can wait for their cooldowns to be up and can strike at a moment that is convenient for them where the target cannot. They can attack when the target's health is low from, you know, taking damage from NPCs. And finally, the target that they are planning on ganking cannot preemptively attack even when it is clear that the rogue is setting up for a gank. They literally need to wait and lose about a third of their health before they can safely return fire. So, as I said, I think all of that is shit. What would I propose? Well, a few things. Firstly, I think we need the minimap to display both hostile and neutral agents all the time. And I think the UI should give us some sort of indication when an agent is approaching us. Think something along the lines of the red directional flashes that you see on screen when you get hit, but perhaps white when we hear footsteps of a nearby agent. Basically, it shouldn't be possible for someone to take advantage of our camera angle and sneak up behind us and shotgun us in the head. I think that is just lame. It's really not fun for anyone except for the person with the shotgun. Now, I'm fully aware that this reduces the scope for stealth style tactics and gameplay, but to be honest, I really don't think that that is what this game needs in order to improve the PvP experience for the vast majority of players. Stealth needs a counter, and I think that some UI heads up isn't too much to ask for. Secondly, and most importantly, I propose the implementation of a PvP flagging system that gives advantages to players who are being attacked for the first three to five seconds of PvP combat to balance out the huge advantages that PvP aggressors are getting. Let's talk through an example. Let's imagine a group of two people, both of them farming the DZ for loot and credits. Let's call them the PvE group in this example. They're in combat with NPCs when a group of two players come by with nefarious intentions. We'll call this the PvP group. One member from the PvP group shoots one person from the PvE group with a single bullet. Now at this point, the people who fired the first shot, that group of two people, are now flagged for PvP. They started this mess, so they are immediately vulnerable to a counterattack. They are PvP flagged. The PvE group, on the other hand, now get a UI notification giving them, say, three or four or five seconds, whatever, to prepare for PvP combat. In this moment, their health is fully restored and their cooldowns are immediately reset so that they have them available to them in the upcoming battle. They also get a bonus 100% move speed so they can choose to simply run away if they don't want to fight. Crucially, they are totally invulnerable to any PvP damage during this time. So there is a window of time where these guys can turn and face their attackers and prepare for a proper fair fight or they can just look at the odds, perhaps assess that they aren't in their favor and just hightail it out of there. This is particularly important if this wasn't a 2v2 and was in fact the more common 1v4. If the PvE players do want to fight and they don't want to wait the three to five seconds, they can immediately turn and engage the enemy before the flagging timer is complete. But when they do this, they are immediately now PvP flagged mean that they can take PvP damage. They lose their invulnerability and their move speed. Now at this point, only one bullet in our example has been fired. So actually no one has gone rogue yet. But what's happened is that the conditions have been laid for a fair fight. The PvP crew have declared their intention to attack and the PvE group has been given a fair chance to either defend or flee. If the PvP group fires again after the PvE group has been flagged for PvP, so after that three or five second timer, the PvP group is then rogue. They can also decide to change their mind and not go rogue. This is important in contexts like manhunt firefights where people might accidentally shoot someone who is not PvP flagged. Flagging another player for PvP will not send you rogue. It simply sets up the conditions for you to be able to damage another player so that you can then go rogue if you want to. So to break it down even more simply, if I shoot another player, I am PvP flagged and I can then take PvP damage. If another player shoots me, 
I am PvP flagged after, you know, three, five seconds of waiting, this flagging process that takes place. During the flagging process, I am immune to PvP damage, my cooldowns are reset, my health is restored, and I have bonus move speed. I lose my invulnerability and my move speed after three or five seconds, or if I shoot another player before that three to five seconds is up. And finally, being PvP flagged does not automatically mark you as rogue. So this system would immediately significantly reduce the regularity of ganking in the DZ. If a group of four players engage a solo player, for the first few seconds that person is both invulnerable and has enough move speed to get out of there. Sure, they could be slowed if the gankers are applying a bleed effect, but I actually think that solo players should be immune to bleed effects since that running away is literally the only defense they have in the DZ. That's something I'll talk more about in a later video covering griefing and social systems. But more importantly, this creates a throwdown moment instead of a ganking moment. It creates a moment where all players can consider the fight that is about to come and prepare for it you know, with health and cooldowns at the ready so that the fight that then takes place is fair, strategic and interesting and not based on who opened fire first while stacking all of their buffs or who has the bigger numbers advantage. So what do we lose here? Obviously, we lose the ability for stealthy ganks or for the deceptiveness that the DZ has become known for. You know those stories of people inviting others to a group just so they can then drop group and then jack their loot after they farmed a few landmarks by killing them? That's going to happen a lot less under this model. And there's a valid argument that this is a sad loss. The backstabbing, deceptiveness and unfairness of the DZ is something that some people really like about it and we cannot ignore those players or just dismiss them as being jerks. They aren't jerks, they just enjoy a specific type of gameplay, which is absolutely their right. But it's my view that this is not a style of gameplay that is worth protecting when the overwhelming majority of the player base rejects it. This sort of stuff is fine for the survival game mode because the absence of overpowered abilities, gear sets, player talents and consumables means that the combat is inherently much more fair and because people sign up to that sort of gameplay when they queue for survival. But most people don't want ganking in the DZ. More than anything else, they want a place where they can fairly utilize all of the gear that they've worked for, a place where they can choose to PvP on fair terms, where they can be strategic and actually outplay their opponent rather than just die in the first one and a half seconds of combat. Right now, the DZ is one of two things. It's 4v4 groups engaging in PvP that they enjoy because the conditions are somewhat fair. And it's also ganking, just straight up pure, simple ganking. And ganking is not something that should be protected. This isn't DayZ or Rust or EVE Online. It's a AAA looter shooter on both PC and console. This game cannot enshrine and protect the possibility of ganking any longer. The community has made it clear that this type of gameplay just isn't what is going to keep them coming back. And for that reason, I really think it needs to be stamped out. There's a lot more to fixing PvP than this, of course. Uh, you know, my next few videos I'll be doing on this, I'll be looking at moment to moment combat, including things like stat identification, combat rolling, signature skill usage, game pace, hip fire, and of course, the use or more specifically the ignoring of cover based mechanics. That video will be coming later in the week. So keep an eye out for that one. For now, guys, if you like this video, be sure to drop it a like and let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and sign up for a notification perhaps so that you know exactly when that next video arrives. Thank you very much for watching guys. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.